tiki drink of uh, my own design, a collaborative design called uh, the Across the Pond. The thing that was tricky about the drink wasn't even the drink, it was finding a name for it because tiki is all such nautical kind of themes and we couldn't really betray the pond kind of genesis of this thing. So it was really kind of hard and I think that the Across the Pond is a perfect compromise because it references the sea but it actually has pond in the name and it uses bu uh, British rum uh, from Pussers so it all, it's all kind of tidy. There's Kraken uh, Spice Rum, which we've chosen because it's actually got a lot of caramel going on with it, so it's kind of a different, like, burnt sugar kind of sweetness, unlike a lot of other ones that just straight sweet. Um, Canton Ginger Liqueur um, for that sort of Polynesian thing. And then uh, white grapefruit juice and lime juice, which if you look at, like, a lot of the tiki recipes, like the classic ones, Trader Fix, that kind of stuff, those are, like, the two staples. I mean, it's basically... Like, tikis are strong, sweet, and sour, and the sour almost always is coming from white grapefruit or uh, lime juice. It wasn't something that I sat down and, you know, was like, I've got to start a business. I was trying to find a place to take a girl on a date and talking to a college friend, asking him if he had any good places to recommend, and he didn't really have anything, and I didn't have anything, and I, so I started going to City Search and New York Magazine and all that stuff, and just like, didn't trust any of the information I was getting, because basically what I realized was that these were reviews that were meant to be read by me, meant to be read by my mom, my great aunt Joan was reading this, like what my great aunt Joan thinks is romantic and, and trendy, I really hope I don't think the same. So we realized that there was a real lack of a focal point for this information, and so much of it was subjective. So you've got these sort of men's magazines writing about stuff for guys, men's interest things, but it's not local, it's not timely, and so what we really sought to do was uh, kind of mash those things up, do city information, do breaking information, restaurants, bars, the stuff that you really need to know, uh, and then you know apply to it the lens of you know, the post-college guy. I started the company with this college friend uh, whom I mentioned. We looked and there was actually something doing that very nicely for women called Daily Candy. We kind of developed our, our product and started sending it out and then we actually went and approached their investors and we didn't have like a PowerPoint or anything like that. We were like, uh, like we're not going to tell you about the business that's making you guys rich. We're just going to do this for guys. Like how'd you like the other half of things? So that was how we ended up getting involved with our investors and we uh, took around like a small round of funding and then kind of took it from there. Um, it's a very multifaceted job and it really comes down to basically is a person a hard worker, are they organized, and are they cool? Right. You know, we can we can basically make it work with two of those three. And one of the things that I like so much about this kind of job and really getting to see what's going on in all these markets is seeing kind of how things propagate. It's just interesting to see how things are kind of getting picked up. You just sort of see how it kind of sloshes around and all that stuff. We started in 2005, and when the recession hit, one of the concerns I had was that a lot of our content is about startups, it's about new stuff. I was like, wow, like nobody's going to be starting anything because like nobody's got any money, everything is so lean. And what we found was that basically creative people are going to continue to be creative. So instead of opening up, you know, multi-floored, huge, like, you know, Dolce Group or Patina restaurant, these guys would go and get a food, food truck. And the food truck thing exploded. Very recently, gone on kind of burger frenzy. I started out, uh, went down to Mineta a couple weekends ago. Then the next day went to Red Cat, had their burger, which actually completely blew the doors off Mineta. I mean... Their burger is legit. Red Cap was even better. This buddy of mine is is trial trial testing the meats that he's going to make his burger with. So I went over to his place, and he had all beef cheek burgers. It was like this total burger bonanza. And I got to say, the beef cheek totally took it. Uh, you know, I think it's because this was something that this what Thrillist does was something that I wanted as a consumer. If I had that sort of moment when I realized there was the hole in the market and had found that Thrillist already existed, 
but it said sweet. Great. I know where to eat dinner tonight. I do understand what it delivers to people, and that's what really makes it fascinating. That's what drives me, is having a real first-hand appreciation for and need for what it is we do. Interweaving yourself into the fabric of someone's life. So every time they get into work, open up their email, they know that you're going to be there. That habitual nature helps you kind of develop a sense of trust with the people. You know, the future of Thrillist is that we are finding ways to basically better serve the readers that we have. We're still not serving all the needs of the people that are reading us already. We started our service basically because guys like me, guys like my friends, guys I went to college with, we were all like, where do I go to dinner? Why can't I trust anything? Okay, here it is. Here's your products. Here's information. But when it came down to it, now it's like, you know, we're looking around and like, where does a guy go shop? Where does a guy do... You know, get local deals. Like all this, all the things that a guy is doing, we should be able to help out with because we know guys. We've got the infrastructure. We've got a tech team to make it happen. We're looking at like Groupon, and like you've got Groupon, which is like you're getting the value pack in the mail. Kind of taking that quality and value approach rather than the just generality of the Groupon, which again is meant to be consumed by me, my great aunt Joan. Anytime that we can come into a viable business with a demographic specificity, we have value to add. And so that's really what we're seeing the future of what Thrillist is doing, because there's a million things out there that can be done better for a guy. And frankly, the post-college pre-kids guy is a really, really uh, coveted segment of the population because you've got, you know, you've got your earning potential, but you're not like paying to get your kid's teeth fixed. Man walks into a bar and it's a normal bar, like totally unexceptional, except for the fact there's just a monkey sitting back on behind the bar. And the bartender is like not really paying attention to the monkey, the monkey's just sitting there. Guy orders his drink. Halfway through his drink, he's like, what's the story with this monkey? The bartender's like, oh yeah, that guy. He goes over and clobbers the monkey on its head. And the monkey starts filleting, just wildly filleting. And he finishes, and the bartender turns to the guy, he's like, you want to try? And he's like, okay, but don't hit me that hard. <laughs> Maybe Paul Rudd. We're all kind of alloyed creatures. And so anybody that is so totally any one way, I think rings false to, the, to an, an authentic and discerning male audience. And that's kind of where we position our content. It's like, we'll talk about, you know, being successful and stuff like that. We're not going to pretend like you're Puff Daddy. We know that the fact is, like, you're successful, but you also you know, cry at the end of the movie. Everybody does. You've got to. He's so tiny. But, you know, it's, it, it, that's really the thing is that, and, and I think, frankly, why we're successful is that we come in from a position of authenticity. So the ultimate man is... It's like a little bit of everything and it and has strengths and weaknesses and the reason that we're able to garner the trust that we do with our audience is we don't pretend like you're something you're not. It's just us. I'm like you.